Well, hello once again, and welcome to Midweek Connect. My name's Dave Walker. My title today is um, a question which many people in this world, perhaps even you as a Christian or as a regular to this broadcast, may be asking yourself. The, the question is, what's behind it all? What's behind it all? And I used to have uh, a conversation with my physics teacher. When I was young at school, I wasn't a Christian then. And he used to talk about the origins of the universe and different things. But I said, look, before all that, before this explosion, before all these things that you're saying supposed to have happened, even though none of us were there when it happened to prove it, uh, what started it off? And his very words were, uh, well, then you have to go into the religious argument because science hasn't got the answer. And I thought, yeah, the, the answer, the, the argument of faith, the direction of faith has to be somewhere you go when you contemplate the big questions in life. Um, I've got um, some verses from the Bible here which just sum this up and then I'll come back with some more points. Because the Bible does actually explain it quite simply. John chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Just there talking about Jesus' role in creation. And just a few more verses in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 3. <clears throat> now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, for the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their com commendation. By faith we understand that the, wor the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. And I asked this question when I was young, you know, what did, <coughs> where did everything come from? <clears throat> Sadly, people are still asking this question today and ignoring the fact that there's a creator or the possibility there could be one and <coughs> are asking these questions. Just recently, they sent up the James Webb Telescope now, the James Webb Telescope is fascinating because that's actually in orbit around the sun, but locked into the Earth's gra field of gravity. And it's actually four times uh, the distance uh, from, from the Earth to the moon. It's, it's literally um, 100,000 miles um, away from the Earth. And it's kind of behind the moon and it's going around the sun with, with the Earth. And it, the, the, with the James Webb Telescope, they've seen some quite incredible things. But the problem is that the more we delve into outer space in the past and in the subatomic world, we come up with ma magnificent, fantastic paradoxes that science simply cannot answer. And we run up against these paradoxes. I'm going to tell you four. What I'm going to do right now is I am going to prove the existence of God through argument alone. And if you had common sense, you would see proof of the existence of God through these four points, these four paradoxes, and then we'll come up back to some scripture and, and bring it to a close. Number one, does space go on forever? You know, obviously it, do, it must stop somewhere, and if it stops somewhere, then what's behind it? What a paradox. You see, science has tried to answer this by saying, oh, yes, um, uh, you know, the, the Big Bang and stuff, and that's when uh, space was created, and that's when time was created. There's no evidence of that. If you think that all the galaxies are moving apart, and you think you've got evidence for that, there's, there's still no way that there's evidence that time was created at the same, same time, and also space was. Matter and space are two different things. The universe must go on forever. Space, sorry, must go on forever. Not not objects, but space must absolutely go on forever. And I would say that that is a paradox that science cannot answer, but that glorifies the existence of God. He doesn't want us to understand everything. He wants us to look at it and think, wow, God must have sorted it out. That's paradox number one. Paradox number two, 
do we have an eternal past? Has space, has everything always been here? Well, we know from the Word of God that God has always been here. God has always existed. We don't need to understand how that is the case. You know, we don't need to understand why that is. It just is because God is God. And if you say that it all started at the Big Bang, what started before it? It's stupid to say that. The Big Bang isn't a religious argument. It's not God. Stop worshipping it. God has always been there. Paradox number three. What about infinite divisibility? So if you chop an atom in half, if you go down to the very smallest object and say, what is smaller than that? There has to be something smaller. Simply because... The object you see in front of you, no matter how small, can always be chopped in half. Another, another proof that the subatomic in, uh, intricate world glorifies the existence of God. And one final thing, and then we'll wrap it up. The final thing, the final paradox is this. Is it possible to have something out of nothing? There was nothing, a vacuum, nothing for no reason, a matter appeared. No, it's not possible. Because for that to happen, you have to have subatomic uh, laws and the laws of physics in place for, for that to happen. They've said that at the Large Hadron Collider, they think that that could happen. That, but that only happens when there's other stuff in the place beforehand. The universe always exists. So that, oh, oh, sorry, exists already. So that makes those things uh, exist and pop up out of nowhere. But when there was absolutely nothing, what brought something out of nothing? And the answer is God. I'll sum it up. Sorry to blind you with science, but we have to meet them at their own game sometimes and, and discuss these things and then come back and we'll come back to the faith thing. Just sum these four things up. Does space go on forever? Yes, I believe it does. It glorifies the existence of God. Uh, was there an eternal past? Yes, um, I believe so. I believe that God has always existed. Number three, can you chop um, things up and make them smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller? I don't know, but God knows. And number four, um, is it possible to have something out of nothing? Yes, God created it that way, but only he can do it. The answer is God. The answer is faith in God. Let's go back to those verses again, Hebrews 11, 1 to 3. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what was seen was not made out of things that are visible, but invisible. God created everything. And just to sum it up, Colossians 1, 21 to 3 in the New Testament, and you who were once alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil things, he, God, has now reconciled you in his body, in the body of Jesus Christ, by his death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in your faith, established and firm, not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. Very simple. God has created the universe. Mankind has rejected God and walked away and looked for all these other solutions. Jesus Christ, God in the body of, 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 of man, died on the cross to pay the price for your sins. He's the only way that you can connect with this eternal creator. If you give your life to him and follow him, he will just work in your life in the most incredible ways. This God that created this intricate universe that we cannot and are not supposed to understand wants a relationship with you and he's with you today. And if you are a Christian, you don't need to worry about that thing or that thing or that thing or that thing or that thing. Trust him, spend time with him, give your heart to him again. He will take care of your anxieties. Discover him through the Bible and through your, only, uh, your own relationship with him via the Holy Spirit. Have, have, have a time with him today. Walk out at night and look at the stars and just say, God, you're amazing. You created all that. He is real. We know that God exists through the argument that I presented through science, but more importantly, through faith and through your personal relationship with God. And God who created the universe is with you now and he wants to meet with you. Why not spend time with him? Thank you for spending time with us. We meet at Elim Church Romsey, um, 10.30 every Sunday and 6.30. Come along this week. Come and join us. Worship God with us. And um, there'll be a message afterwards where I'll be preaching and tea and coffee and you can just get chat and get to know people. You are welcome. Come along just as you are. 
God bless you and thank you for tuning in to Midweek Connect from Elim Church Romsey today. Thank you.